Okay, this is video four and the final video of the uh, go through lesson on uh, worksheet seven point four. So I will cover all the questions from twelve all the way to the back. It will be a slightly longer video. So if you need a break, uh, do go for your break first. Um, then after that, let's uh carry on with this discussion. Okay, for question twelve, we started the 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 question with uh what is meant by question. So what is meant by question is different from uh, the defined kind of question. If uh, the question is asking you define work done, then uh, the question would be, uh, the, 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 the answer would be the standard, oh, it is the uh, product of the force multiplied by the parallel distance, dot, 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 dot. It is quite straightforward. So if it is not a defined kind of question, if it is asking you what is meant by, then it is important for you to first define uh, the term. So this work done, what is it? Right, so define it, what is it? Oh, it is actually a kind of energy transfer, right? Then what is meant by energy transfer in this context? Then you need to be very uh, specific. In this context, we are talking about the energy transfer between a shuttle, uh, from between a shuttle court and a racket, right? Or you can be even more specific. It is from the racket to the shuttle court. Then after that, you need to talk about, okay, so now I know that work done is energy transfer from uh, racket to shuttle court. Uh, how do I calculate it? Well, it is calculated by the force acting over a certain distance, right? You multiply them, right? You can say that uh, it is a product of a force over uh, and a parallel distance. Yeah, so to get these two mark, not so easy, right? But as long as you can tell me what is it, like it is a form of energy transfer, I would have already given you the one mark, yeah? Okay, for part B, um, you need to be very mindful because uh, they are asking for a very specific uh, instance of the whole process. So for example, here you can see that they are saying uh, from the question, they are saying that the shuttlecock is moving the fastest. So meaning that they are saying that at the very beginning, it is moving at constant speed. After that, it actually slows down until it reaches point Y. And the question wants you to talk about the energy transfer that is happening from the start to point Y. And it is a three mark question with a lot of answer line. So because of that, they would expect many, many detail, right? So down here, uh, maybe from the start, I will first talk about, because it's three marks, I will talk about where do I get maximum energy? Right, so I know at the very very beginning when it impacted the shuttle clock, how do I know I have to talk about the shuttle clock? Because they are asking you to describe the energy ch change of the shuttle clock, right? So, um, because of that, I will focus my question to talk about okay, what is the maximum energy, uh, and what kind of energy is it? So I will just start off with a very simple statement. Okay, at the point of impact, impact, my shuttle clock has the highest speed and uh, highest height, right? I can see that here, my highest height and my highest speed occur at the point of impact. So I would just say that I will get maximum GP and KE. And I hope that that will give me the first one mark. Then uh, in point number two, I will, I will because conservation of energy, ma, so I will need to talk about transfer of energy, right? So I will talk about the transfer of energy between the racket and the shuttle clock. So how I phrase it, I would just say that, oh, okay, um, uh, the, the shuttle uh, the racket must have transferred some energy to the shuttle clock uh, as, as uh, wire work done, right? I didn't include it here because I feel that uh, that one is either you use that to replace point number one or you in point number one, you just focus on talking about the energy that the energy store that the shuttle clock have. Then in point number two, I just want to talk about how this uh, GPE and KE changes as it move along this curved path. Right, so as it move along this curve path, I notice that the height is dropping. So I know GPE must have dropped. And I also know that from the question, it says that it is slowing down. So how do I get this data? This data is actually from here, right? The shuttle clock actually slows down. So because of that, I will focus on that and say that, oh, my GPE and my KE of the shuttle clock must be dropping because it drops in height and uh, uh, the kinetic and, uh, and it's slowing down so kinetic energy also slow down then after that i have to think about right uh, in conservation of energy i also know that energy cannot simply be lost and disappear it must be lost to somewhere so because of that i want to share with the examiner that i know this so i will say that this loss of gpe and ke must have been 
transfer out right and work against the air resistance so i would use this keyword work done against air resistance to signify to the uh, to signal to the examiner that i'm aware there's an energy transfer out there's an energy loss right and this energy loss is to do what is to work against air resistance yeah then for part c uh most of you are able to actually uh uh, know that it is basically just kinetic energy equals to half mv square right and you will be able to find the speed right you can find the speed like that the kinetic energy is actually given right and the mass of the uh, shuttlecock is also given right so uh i i will just zoom out at this point and uh um just uh the, the rest of the, the 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 scripts are just for you to 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 read right you can uh, blow up your youtube screen and now read different parts so i'll just zoom in here this is a common mistake some of you think that gpe actually rise but in fact when you look at the diagram there is no and uh, there's no uh, increase in height uh some of you didn't use the term work done against air resistance you all talk about sound and uh, heat uh, but it is actually a secondary conversion process if you look at the flow chart here all right um then let's move on to the next question uh the next question is about efficiency so you need to be very mindful that at the very start you need to tell me that this efficiency is actually either a ratio uh, or a percentage okay it is not amount of energy blah 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 it is a ratio so define it first what type of things are they so then after that because it is asking you what is meant by you need to contextualize it so in this uh, question is about a solar cell basically a solar cell what it does is that it turns uh, solar energy or light energy into electrical energy right so your solar energy is actually your input right your electrical energy is actually your output right so because of that uh your efficiency if you have checked the formula is actually the useful output the word useful is important over the total input right so um if you have that then uh you can form the what is meant by and uh you you, you will be good to go yeah Okay, anyway, I just want to take this opportunity and let my class know that all these are actually on your one note, so you can refer to it. Okay, for part three, uh, it seems that uh, for my class at least, uh, there's a lot of students when they look at a question part, like part three and they are like completely lost. Actually, for part three, right, I'm not testing you on any physics concept. Eh? It is about comprehension, but in mathematics. So let me share with you how it works, okay? So number one, you can see that there's a table given to you. Uh, when a table is given to you, it means that we are checking whether you can uh, identify which are the uh, useful or meaningful data that you, you need to use. So down here, you can see that in the question, they are talking about um, the, the light of brightness of 1000 W per meter square. Uh, so, so this entire question is, is talking about this light of brightness at 1000 W per meter square. So immediately you can see that W per meter square is here. So they are actually already telling you to focus on this row of data, right? Um, then after that, it says that there's this efficiency of 18%. So you just put this at the back of your mind, right? Um, then after that, it says that uh, using the maximum power output in table 9.1. So maximum output is actually here. So they are actually asking you to focus on this guy, right? You can see the, 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 the intersection, right? First, they tell you, okay, look at this row. Now look at this column. So this number must be very important, right? Then it says, uh, can you go and calculate the number of joules of energy that is falling onto the cell? So this energy per second falling on the cell must be referring to your solar energy or your light power. And uh, if you look at efficiency, right, you would already know that um, your output power, which is your electrical energy per second, has to come from your solar energy per second, right? So if you think about it, it is 
they are telling you efficiency of 18% so whatever input that you have 18% of this input would be converted into your electrical energy so if you do your math correctly so down here how I know uh, the output energy is 2 because here is 2 so I substitute into the output power so I will get your uh, solar power or your light power when it multiplied by 18% must be equals to 2 so the solar power which is actually the uh, number of joules of energy per second falling on the cell uh, must be 2 divided by 18% so that's how I get this number so as you can see here there's not much physics concepts tested it's more on how well you comprehend the data okay then for question 2 right question 2 is tough right so for question 2 you need to do it step by step so in uh, step 1 uh, you can see that um, in step 1 you can see that for the total output of 2w right uh, you get 2 joules of electrical energy per 1 second right and you know that this 2w of electrical energy actually come from 11.1 w of solar energy because that is what you have calculated here so this diagram basically sums up la right how the uh, energy transfer happen right so i i'm just writing all this down to highlight to you how do i get uh, 11.1 so 2 divided by uh, 18 percent will get me the 11.1 right so then I know that, oh, the solar panel must have received 11.1 W, which is 11.1 joules of solar energy per one second, correct? Then what happened is that if I look at the data, uh, this, kind of, uh, this kind of data is generated by 1000 W per meter square. So I know that this 11.1 W, right, comes from a solar panel that will absorb 1000 W of solar power per meter square so it means that every one meter square of the panel right must be able to capture 1000 W 1000 W of solar power so what is 1000 W of solar power it means 1000 J of light energy every second so now I have a ratio if I have one meter square of this solar panel I can absorb 1000 W to absorb 11.1 how many meter square I need right then I will be able to take uh, uh, so, so how, how, how do I do this uh, mathematics is what uh, well isn't this uh, how, how do this converts to this will be I will take 1000 W divided by 1000 W uh, times 11.1 w that that is how i get 11.1 w here right so what i do i will just take whatever i do on the right hand side then i just do to the right hand side as well lo. right so here how do i get this isn't it one meter Square, I just divided by 1000 times 11.1 that is how I get 0 0.11 meter because the question is asking me if I want to receive 11 joules of solar energy per second how big must my solar cell be right that's why I will use this right and then I interpret from the table that oh in order for me to absorb 11.1 joules per second I would need a certain surface area then from the data I know that right if I have one meter square of the panel I would receive 1000 J joules of light energy per second so if I do the ratio this is how I get 0 0.011 okay so like I said, this kind of question is not so much on physics concept but so much on your confidence level of interpreting data and being uh, mindful of the hints that is embedded in the question. Okay, the last and final question. So, by the way, uh, this question and this question are O level question. Okay, for 14, uh, at the very beginning, it starts off with a very straightforward question. 
uh, to find the kinetic energy, just be very mindful that all the parameter that you substitute must be SI unit. So if you do the substitution correctly, you'll be able to find uh, 44,000 joules. So here, what I'm trying to tell you is that even though WH is not something that I uh, you have learned, just change it to joules and uh, answer the question appropriately. So sooner or later, you will be, in fact, not sooner or later, for your end of year exam, you will be facing with such question where we give you a lot of data and you need to figure out which data is relevant to your question. Right, so for uh, part one, uh, some of you didn't read properly, but anyway, it's your first time, so let's learn, okay? So here they are asking you how much energy, right, is used if the car is uh, moving for one kilometer uh, for each journey. Uh, one kilometer of the journey, whereby 50% of the journey is on highway and 50% of the journey is on urban driving. So if you look at the data, uh, at here, these two, you will see that uh, if it moves uh, one kilometer on urban driving, it will use 160 joules or 160 WH. But you are only moving it for 0 0.5 kilometer, right? So you just take 160 times 0 0.5, and then the remaining 0 0.5 kilometer you are traveling on a uh, highway, so it will be uh, 140 times 0 0.5, and you get the one mark right yeah so like i said uh this this kind of question database question is not so much on uh, physics concept but on how you interpret the data okay then after that uh for part three uh, uh part two part two is a bit challenging um they are asking you for the distance travel when the car is fully charged and you are moving on urban driving so if you look at the data urban driving actually requires uh 160 wh and uh, the battery actually has 30,000 WH. So uh, when the data given to you for one kilometer, they have already accounted for whatever efficiency that you need. So actually this is quite straightforward. You just need to take uh, 30,000 divided by 160 and you will get uh, 190 kilometer. This is actually a 2SF round up. So some of you, when you, uh, when you do this, um, you will actually get an answer of 187.5 and many of you i think that's the way uh, mathematics has trained you if the maximum distance is 187.15 you will tend to round down but i just want to show you this is the uh, cambridge uh, report and this is the question that it sticks from it is it, no need to round down so even if you get 187.5 right no need to round down, just apply 2SF to it and the answer key will be 190 kilometer. Okay, so no need to round down. So I just want to highlight here, it is just 2SF, no need to round down. Okay, even though this is the maximum distance, you don't need to round down. Okay, then after that, they are asking you for the mass of the battery in order to uh, in order for, for you to have a battery that, it, that contains uh, 30,000 joules of energy or 30,000 WH of energy. So if you look at uh, the data here, uh, you will see that for battery, right? If I want to store 30,000 WH of energy in the battery, uh, every one kilogram of the battery will give you 130 WH. So you just do a simple uh, division, you'll be able to get 230 kilogram, right? Okay, then for part four, uh, what you need to check is that whether it is true or not. And they actually requires you to use the data from uh, question 9.1. So how do I prove? Well, it is just plugging in value to check. There's not much uh, uh, formula or whatnot. So if now I use the distance of 190 kilometer as my control and I want to check, first I look at the electrical car, right? At electrical car, I know that, uh, uh, okay, so for to travel 190 kilometer, right? Basically, I am using uh, this much energy, right? So I will use this, 
I, I use this distance as my control and as a result this amount of energy will be my control as well so for electrical car in order for me to carry 30,000 WH uh, I will look at the efficiency so the efficiency of uh, converting the energy in electrical car is that only 80% is converted right so in order for me on the road I need to use 30,000 ma so how much I must carry right if 30,000 is my 80% I must carry this much so if I carry this much when the efficiency is 80% I am still going to get 30,000 which I can spend on traveling so that's why this is divide not times up then I will do the same thing to my petrol car right my petrol car the efficiency I think is even lower right is 20% so in order for me to use 30,000 to travel that 190 kilometer I must carry 150 WH uh, with a working efficiency of 20% so I carry 150% uh, 150,000 uh, only 20% will be used by the by the uh, used uh, by the petrol car to, to spend on traveling right so I have this so now I know that for to move this distance my electrical car must carry this much of energy store on it my petrol car must carry this much of energy store on it now i want to know how heavy it will be so for a battery if i want to store this much how heavy is the battery i will go and look for this data right data number three so when i look at data number three right i realize that uh one kilogram of a battery can only store this much so in order for me to store uh, this amount of energy in the car i would need this amount of battery which is 288.462 kilogram and for the petrol if i were to store 150 thousand uh, wh then my petrol one kilogram of petrol is actually worth this much of energy so i would know that uh, my petrol will be of this mass and if you take 11.538 and if you multiply 25 times you would get 288.42 so i know that the claim is true right because 11.538 times 25 times is actually equals to 288.462 right okay last but not least i have to check um, if now i were to fully charge an electrical car at level two uh, how much time is taken so here uh, i would need to look for a level two charging point right because the question says so yeah and i know that uh, uh i can only charge it 7.4 kw so i will take it as 7.0 kw is 7400 w so this guy 7.4 kw is actually equals to 4 a uh, 7400 w right and the battery uh stores 30,000 wh right so you can see how this and this cancel and that's how i get the h over here so uh the duration if you do the division you will get this number 4.05 and like i said for physics you don't need to round it down you don't need to round it up you just apply the 2sf uh the round the normal rounding and you will get 4.1 uh, hour okay so that is the end of the uh, go-through lesson for worksheet 7.4.